This is AutoLine Daily reporting on the global automotive industry. Toyota revealed the all-new Highlander back in April, and now it's going on sale. It rides on Toyota's new global architecture and is over two inches longer than the outgoing model, which was all added to the cargo area. Powertrain options include a 3.5 liter V6 mated to an 8-speed automatic, expected to return 24 mpg combined, and a 2.5 liter hybrid setup that's estimated at 36 mpg combined. Three different all-wheel drive systems are also available. An 8-inch display screen comes standard with most models, but a 12.3-inch screen is available as well. And of course, no new model would be complete without a suite of driver assistance technologies. Highlander pricing starts at nearly $36,000, all-wheel drive adds another $1,800, and the hybrid, which won't be available until February, starts just over $39,000. Audi also revealed the updated Q7. It's powered by an all-new 3-liter V6 engine that's mated to an 8-speed automatic transmission. All-wheel drive is standard. And to make it ride smoother, the new Q7 is available with adaptive air suspension, which adjusts the ride height and firmness of the dampers. The styling of the SUV features design elements from the company's current design language, and the interior design borrows elements from the Q8. The interior also features a new MMI touch response system that replaces the rotary dial and other buttons with two high-res touchscreens. The new Q7 carries a starting price of just under $62,000. Be sure to join us for AutoLine After Hours on Thursday as we look at the end of a year and the end of a decade. Automakers had a smooth ride over the last 10 years, but the next 10 look bumpy. We'll have consultant Paul Eichenberg and Joe Langley from IHS Market on the show to point out the most important trends and where that's taking us. So join John and Gary for some of the best insights into the automotive industry. As we've reported, automakers and suppliers have announced plans to cut thousands of jobs over the next decade. And now commercial truck makers are following suit. Yesterday, Navistar announced it's cutting 10% of its global workforce, and last month, Cummins said it plans to cut 2,000 salary jobs. Trucking companies ordered too many big rigs last year when freight volumes were growing. But that trend has reversed, and orders for big trucks are drying up, which is why we're seeing these jobs get cut. On top of that, A slowdown in the global economy is hurting sales. And in other big truck news, Volvo and Isuzu announced they've agreed to form a strategic alliance in commercial vehicles. The deal includes Isuzu buying Volvo's subsidiary, UD Trucks, which is valued at around $2.3 billion. The two companies said the alliance will also explore other opportunities for collaboration on a global basis. Speaking of alliances, PSA and FCA made their merger official. The two companies signed an agreement to create the fourth largest automaker globally by volume and the third largest by revenue. But the devil is in the details. It's expected that completing the deal will take another 16 months. And then there's that GM racketeering lawsuit against FCA. So who knows what will happen between now and then. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone Tires. Your journey, our passion. Automotive suppliers are getting cranked up for the CES show next month. Bosch will be unveiling driver monitoring technology, all with the idea of eliminating driver distraction, which is a major safety concern the world over. It will likely go into production by 2022 because that's when the EU will mandate a system like this as standard equipment to warn drivers of drowsiness and distraction. Europe's NCAP, or New Car Assessment Program, will use this technology by 2025 in rating the crash safety of its cars. Bosch's system is similar to Cadillac Super Cruise, 
which uses a camera to watch the driver's eyes and make sure they're paying attention to the road. But the Bosch system also monitors all the people in a car. It will warn if a child unfastened their seatbelt, if someone is leaning too far forward, or has their feet up on the seat next to them. If this sounds like the nanny state and big brother are getting too much control of a vehicle, just keep in mind that this technology is expected to save more than 25,000 lives and help prevent at least 140,000 severe injuries by 2038. Ask any automotive designer and they'll tell you designing in clay is still important because you have to look at an actual physical model. But new digital technologies are helping to improve the design process as well. The Hyundai Kia Group are now using virtual reality to aid design evaluation at its R&D center in South Korea. The system allows up to 20 engineers and designers to look at any and all parts of a vehicle at the same time and recommend changes. I recently talked to a Nissan designer who said these current VR systems are really just for collaborative evaluation where suggestions can be made and would not be replacing complex design, whether that be on paper, computer, or in clay. But it's not like it doesn't have its benefits. Hyundai and Kia say they anticipate a 20% reduction in vehicle development times and a 15% reduction in annual development costs using the VR system. That's it for today. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again tomorrow.